And this video is going to walk you through the solution for one of the problems at the end of Alex objective number seven. This particular problem is on the standardization of a base solution by titration. And this is a sample problem, one that pulls up when I'm looking at Alex as a student. And so in this problem, there's a lot of information that we don't need in order to be able to solve the problem. But we're going to go through the wording anyways. It says that we are standardizing a solution of sodium hydroxide, and that just means that we're figuring out what its molarity is. Uh, we weigh out 0.157 milligrams of oxalic acid. The problem tells us that this is a diprotic acid, which means that in the acid-base reaction, this molecule is going to donate two H pluses, di being the prefix for two. And whenever you're working with acids that donate more than one H plus, it's always going to tell you that by calling it a diprotic acid or triprotic acid would donate three. Um, so the 0.157 milligrams of oxalic acid is dissolved in 250 milliliters of water and then it is titrated, which is just a type of reaction, uh, a lab technique. It's titrated with sodium hydroxide solution. When the titration reaches the equivalence point, meaning that the reaction is over, the student finds that she used 108.7 milliliters of sodium hydroxide what's the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution. With these problems, so first of all, um, you know how to do this problem. Even though you haven't seen anything that looks exactly like this in class, you're totally ready to solve this problem. This is a stoichiometry problem uh, with a twist. And with all stoichiometry problems, the first thing that you want to do is write out a balanced equation. So that's the first thing that I've done here the acid and the base reacting with each other. Remember in class we talked about the different types of chemical reactions, one type being an acid-base neutralization reaction in which an acid reacts with a base to produce water and some sort of ionic compound. And so we know that this is the acid because its name is oxalic acid and we know that it's going to give up both of its H pluses meaning that it's going to have this C2O4 2 minus polyatomic ion leftover, which is what we see over here. And then the sodium hydroxide, we've seen examples uh, of acid-base reactions with this where the sodium ion ends up over here as part of the ionic compound or salt. The H and the OH from the acid and the base come together to make water. So there's our products. This reaction needs to be balanced, which I did. And so writing out this is probably the trickiest part of this whole process. Once we get the balanced equation written out, though, we can just do stoichiometry. We know from the problem that we were starting with 157 milligrams of oxalic acid. We need to figure out how many moles of oxalic acid we have so that we know how many moles of sodium hydroxide were required for the reaction. So right away, I'm going to convert milligrams into grams so that I can convert grams into moles using the molecular weight of oxalic acid, which is 90 grams per mole. And then I'm going to relate moles of oxalic acid into moles of sodium hydroxide using the coefficients from the balanced equation. That tells me that I need 0 0.00394 moles of sodium hydroxide to neutralize or react with that given amount of oxalic acid. Once I know the amount of sodium hydroxide in moles, I can calculate the molarity. The problem is telling me that we used 108.7 milliliters of solution. So I know that I have this many moles in 108.7 milliliters. I'm going to plug that into my equation for molarity, moles over volume in liters. Got to do that conversion, which gives me 0 0.0321 one molar sodium hydroxide solution. And you should be able to follow this format for all of these problems.